Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Hyphen here. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how to connect and use your iFootage Anglerfish lights with the iFootage Lumen app. Now that app is available on both Android and Apple devices. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and launch the app. As soon as you launch it, you'll see the Anglerfish logo. Now here, as soon as you open it, you'll see project one. Now that's on there by default. If you've never connected any lights, this is how it's gonna look. You always have to have some project here in the app. But before we go into creating a project with lights, we're gonna go ahead and go over the menu just a little bit. So on the top left, you have your menu button, which goes over your account or your security, your privacy, your passwords, et cetera. It's just overall info on your account, not really anything to do with the lights. In the top middle, you see it says projects. To the right of that, you see a plus symbol. That's to create a new project. And then to the right of that, a little menu button. If you click on that, that gives you the option to rename or delete projects. Now, like I mentioned, as soon as you launch this, you always have project one. We can rename that right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename that. So I'm gonna click on the top right corner, click rename, click on project one. And as you can see, now I can edit it. I'm just gonna go ahead and call this 60DN because that's the light that we're gonna go ahead and control. I'm gonna click on done. Open that project by clicking on it. Now you're gonna see that iFootage Lumen wants to access your device's location. You select precise, then you gotta go ahead and click on allow for the Bluetooth. Now you can go ahead and click on the project and go ahead and open it up. Any lights that are already on and have not been connected will pop up here. So you can see I have 60DN and then I do have an ID number. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that, click on add. And then you'll see it starts to flash. It's adding to the app. And you'll see a little loading progress. It takes a few seconds, probably less than 10 seconds or so. And then it'll show up connecting again. And then from there, now everything will work on the app and it actually works pretty well. So now let's go over kind of the menu, what you see here. You see the name of the project, which I call this one 60DN. On the top right corner is a little green toggle switch. So if you click on that, any lights that are connected to this project will turn off. You click on that again, and all those lights will turn on. And it's actually very responsive. Off, on, extremely quick. Now underneath that, you'll see to the left, it says add new lights. So you can go ahead and look for more lights that are on. Go ahead and connect those. Now underneath that, you see all devices, INT for intensity, all the lights that you have on this project, you can control them all at the same time by moving that brightness intensity level. Now, when you do that, all the lights are gonna match the exact same output. For example, the 60DN, if I move this right now to 11.7%, whatever other light I had would be at 11.7% as well. Go ahead and bring that back down. Now, you could obviously move the slider to change the percentage, or you can manually choose the percentage by typing it in. If you click on that little black rectangle that has the percentage, go ahead and click on that. You can actually type in whatever you want. So right now it's at 0%. Let's just go to 11, press done, and the light's gonna go straight to that. Now, if you wanna have a percentage that's less than one, say for example, 0 0.1, you actually have to type in 0 0.1, then press done, and then it'll do it. If you just press 0.1%, it's not gonna do it. I love that I could easily just type that in extremely quick without having to try to move the slider slowly and get the right spot. Now, again, that applies to all devices. Underneath all devices, you'll see each fixture that you have connected. So if I had the 60DN, if I had the 220, and even let's say the small C4, they would all show up here in a list. Here you see the 60DN, so I'm gonna click on that. And this allows you to now go ahead and control this individual light. Right now it's at 0.1% power. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that up, bring that down. Again, extremely responsive, very fast. INT is for intensity, that's the brightness value. If you click on the effect option, then you have all the effects here that you can choose from. Go ahead and start working with those. So if we go to lightning, then you see we have intensity, speed, frequency, et cetera. Click on done. Now, if you go to music, you have to allow the phone to use the audio. So while using the app, go ahead and select that. And then you see actually like a frequency spectrum on the bottom. There is a very slight delay as you can see. So this doesn't really work all that great. There's not much you can do. The only way to really have it go to music is if you have like a DMX controller or something that actually has a physical cable. Anytime you're using an app to run a sound-based response, it's always gonna have a slight delay. We're gonna go back to intensity. Now, another thing that I wanna mention on the fixtures that you can control specifically with the COB lights, not the C4 lights, but the COB like the 60DN, 220DN and 320DN is that you can also change the dimming curve. The dimming curve allows you to be able to change how responsive 
and how much it ramps up when you're actually changing the intensity. So if you're actually having these be used for a shoot and you wanna have someone controlling a light getting brighter or darker while it's in a shoot, you can choose that dimming curve. It's really great that you're able to do it here in the app. Now, real quick, before going into the 60DN option, I actually put a C4 light back here, which is this tiny little one right there. And we're gonna go ahead and add that light to this project. So we're gonna go ahead and add new lights on the top left. Now it's gonna scan and it should find it probably within a few seconds. And there it is, it shows up C4 and it has an ID number. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, click on add. Again, we'll take a few seconds. Now, one thing that I wanna mention that I think is really awesome is that these lights actually do create a mesh network. So even if they're a little further apart, but they're still within range, they start to create a bigger network for them to be able to communicate with each other. So even if my phone or device is a little further away from one of the lights, as more lights are connected, that mesh network allows me to be closer to another source. And when I operate the app, they're all connected to each other, allowing me to get more range when using the app. All right, so now here under all devices, you see we have the 60DN and we have the C4. So let's first go over the 60DN. Again, you have a slider there for the intensity. You could also type it in if you wanted to. Next to the name of the light and the ID number, you will see a little symbol showing that there is connected power. Although it's actually not running off AC, I have the V-mount battery here, so it's actually running off battery. But for these lights, it doesn't signify whether you're running off battery or AC. For some reason right now, it's always gonna show the AC symbol. Maybe that'll be updated soon via firmware updates. Next to that is a little settings gear. If you click on that, you can see the actual firmware that is currently active on this light. And if there's a firmware update available, which there is here, you'll see on the bottom it has a red update button. So the way to actually update these devices is actually through the app. Unlike many other lights that have to be updated through a USB port, this is awesome because you just need the app. Aside from that, at the top, you also see name. This allows you to rename the devices. So for example, if you have multiple 60DNs or multiple C4s, you can name each light. So that way, when you're setting them up and you have, say, a tag on one of the lights, you know which light is connected to the app. We'll do the firmware update later. Let's go ahead and click out of that. And then you'll see that little green toggle switch. That's if I want to turn off this light, but not turn off the C4. And, but then underneath the 60DN, you see the C4. If I click on that green toggle switch, that goes off. Turn that back on. Turn on the 60DN. And now, as you can see right now, the C4 is at 25% output power. The 60DN is at 2.2% power. But if I go to all devices intensity and I start moving that slider, it'll go ahead and change the intensity of all the lights at the same time. Now, there is sometimes a small little delay. So once you let go and you actually set it, they'll all go to that percentage. The delay only happens sometimes, usually when the lights are at different intensities, but when they're all at the same intensity, which right now, 41.8, you're gonna see they all move together. Now on the C4, you see that there is a battery symbol. So you actually can see how much battery is remaining with the current intensity power. I backed out to the main menu. I'm gonna go ahead and rename the project. But before I do, you can see here, it tells you how many fixtures are connected to that project. So right now it says two lamps. I have the 60DN and the C4 back there. I'm gonna click on the top right corner, rename. And then now I'm just gonna go ahead and call this 60 plus C4. Done just so I know which lights are connected to this project. Now I actually wanna do a firmware update and show you guys how it's done with the app. So we're gonna go ahead and load the project that have the lights that I wanna do a firmware update on. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. Here I have two different lights, the 60DN and I have the C4. So this light and that light back there. So I'm gonna do the firmware update on this 60DN. With it already connected to the app, everything's set. Click on the settings gear for this fixture. Right underneath the name, you'll see the current firmware version. And then under that, if there's a firmware update available, then you can actually click on that red button to update it. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that now. Now it's gonna start downloading on the phone very quickly. And now it's actually updating the firmware wirelessly. Now, depending on the firmware update size, also depending on the internet for the download, this can take a few minutes. Now, while this is updating, you wanna make sure that your phone or device that's connected to these fixtures does not go out. Do not close the app, do not turn off the device. Also, do not turn off or disconnect the power from these fixtures. 
Now, aside from seeing the actual progress bar go up here on the phone, they actually have a progress bar on the back of the screen of the fixtures, which is actually pretty cool. Usually when lights are doing an update from other brands, their screens are completely off and you have to rely either on the computer or whatever device that's doing the update. And then now we're at 99%. And then it says there, the upgrade is complete and connecting. So whatever light that is doing the update will turn off. Now you saw the light flash off. The fan does kick on for a bit. The screen goes out. Pretty much it's resetting. Once you hear that fan go off and the screen does not come back on, then the light has powered off. At which point, then you can safely turn the fixture on manually. So go ahead and press the power button. So I'm gonna hold the on button here on the 60DN and then it's gonna go ahead and turn on. And then here we go, now we're on. After a few seconds, it automatically kicks back on into the app. So it was off, you saw that the fixture was dim on the app showing that's not connected and you do not have to get out of the app. You don't have to reload the project. You can actually stay on the app in the project. Once this comes back on, it's actually gonna reconnect automatically, which is I think really, really awesome. So now everything works as it did before. Everything's very responsive. If I go to the gear setting tab, you'll see here the current version, which we were updating to is V1.2.5. If I get out of that, you can see that the 60DN fixture does not have a little red dot over the gear. That means that there's no firmware update needed. If you look at the C4 and you see a little red dot over the settings gear, that's letting you know that there's a firmware update available for that fixture. So if I wanna go ahead and firmware update, I can go ahead and click on that and then click on update there for that fixture. Now let's go back to the C4 and actually click on that. When you go ahead and click on that, now you actually have a whole bunch of options. You can go into the CCT mode instantly, change the color temperature, the intensity, even green magenta shift, which is really great. And then there is a light source library. So they actually have presets. If you know you want daylight, go ahead and click on the white 5600 Kelvin. It's actually really awesome that they have that. There's a HSI tab to be able to choose whatever color you want. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the intensity just so you can see the light a little bit more. But it's very responsive with the app, even changing all the colors. Underneath intensity where it says picker, you have a few different options. You can go ahead and choose a color from a photo. You can actually click on the little picker to actually turn on your camera. And this will allow you to actually choose a color from your camera. So for example, I wanna go to that color right there, click on pickup. And then you can fine tune all the options here as well. We'll go back, RGBW. So you can actually choose colors this way. You have XY. So you can actually fine tune for specific color gamuts. You can go ahead and go on gel. And there are so many different gels you can choose from. Effect, you have a whole bunch of standard effects that most lights have from flickers to strobes to party, fire, etc. And they all have a lot of flexibility in fine tuning how they work. And then you have the music effect that I showed earlier, which will be responsive to the sound that the mic picks up. But again, as I mentioned earlier, there is a very slight delay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and back out. Diagram is actually really cool because this allows you to map out a room and choose different lights. Now with this, you have to be in horizontal orientation. And what's really cool is that you can actually save, import, or export these diagrams. So if you end up using a different device, you can easily import your setup, your diagram for whatever lights are in use. To the left, we're gonna have the list of the lights that are active. Here you see the 60DN, so I'm gonna click on that. Now the orientation will go back to vertical on the phone. And this allows you to now go ahead and control this individual light. Now this little horizontal light gray rectangle that you see, that's the diagram that you can actually go ahead and choose all the lights and place them to your room. So you can kind of map out what lights are where. So if I click and drag on let's say the 60DN, which is right now the only light that's active, but I've had other lights here, I can choose any one of those. I'm gonna click and drag the 60DN and I can move it anywhere in this little gray rectangle. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it where it's at in this room right now. So that's where that's at. You can also, once it's in there, change the rotation on what angle it's facing and you can change the scale, which makes it more equivalent for the size room. So if you know you are in a really big space, then you're obviously gonna to wanna to make it smaller. If you're in a small room, then make it bigger. Pretty much just go by your eye. It's not scientific, it's not super scientific with exact measurements, but it's just a general diagram you can have, which is gonna be really cool for someone, say a gaffer or anyone that you're really working with to be able to see the layout 
and control the lights. Right now, this light is facing slightly to the right. So that's how that light is right now. Now, if you're gonna end up having a certain setup that you're gonna use more than once, especially if it's like a weekly thing or just over a period of multiple days, I would highly recommend setting up diagrams for your lights. I'm not because this is not gonna be a consistent layout for me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click the trash can button. And then it's gonna say, do you wish to delete the current target? Click delete. Now that's just for the light. If you go back, now you'll have the option to either save or don't save this entire diagram. I'm gonna click don't save. So there you guys have it. That's how you guys control iFootage Anglerfish lights using the iFootage Lumen app. Again, it's available for Android and Apple and the app works great. The lights work great with it. This is actually really intuitive and I'm actually surprised on how great this works being that this is the first go from iFootage into the lighting world. If you're interested in getting any of the iFootage Anglerfish lights, I do have links in the description where you can purchase them. It doesn't change the price that you get it at, but it does help this channel. If you guys are interested in getting any of these lights, I do have links in the description where you can purchase them. It doesn't change the price that you get it at, but it does help this channel. Please make sure to drop a like on this video, drop a comment below if you have any questions, and please make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming soon. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.